The National Director of Public Prosecutions, Advocate Shamila Botoy, has dismissed reports that the resignation of investigating Directorate Head Hermoin Cronier was because of internal fighting. Botoy disputes claims that the NPA is in a crisis. Since Cronier's resignation, Parliament has summoned Botoy and Justice Minister Ronald Lamola to answer on the matter. Botoy was responding to questions around the NPA's prosecution of high-profile cases. The institution has been criticized for what it's alleged for its alleged slow pace in acting against individuals implicated in key corruption matters. Advocate Batoy adds that cases such as those relating to state capture corruption need additional specialized capabilities within the NPA and the investigative directorate. The NPA has the capacity to pursue to prosecute certain corruption cases and complex crime matters and other high-level crimes. However, the extent and nature of state capture corruption does require additional specialized skills and capacities. And so it's really important that we continue with our efforts to ensure that this, these capacities are obtained for the ID and the broader NPA as well. The ID is working closely with other parts of the NPA. The organization is working closely with the asset forfeiture unit to fast track cases, uh, to initiate asset forfeiture proceedings and recovery of stolen money from all jurisdictions. And I agree here, here as well that there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot more work to be done. To unpack this and more, we're now joined by Newsroom Africa's Malung Gelo Boy. A very good afternoon to you, Malu. One of the reasons why uh, the uh, you know, inspect, investor director and head resigned, that was one of the main questions, and, and, the, and the relationship that exists between Batoy yeah. and, and her. How was that addressed? I think what's, what's, what's important to note first, Tamia, about this particular press briefing is that it covered a wide range of issues. But of course, it comes at the back of the resignation of Advocate Cronier, who was in charge of the most, Im the very important directorate in the NPA, which is also fairly new, which is about two years ago. And the reason for that directorate to be formed it was, in, it was formed rather to look into the issues of corruption and state capture. And of course, she resigned. And you've already alluded that. I mean, one of the things that people were talking about was that that directorate had actually not done well in making sure that those that are implicated uh, in state capture are actually prosecuted. But also, Tamu, one of the things that we've heard that has been in the discourse has been perhaps the, you know, the relationships between Batoyi and also Kronje. But uh, Batoyi has, in fact, um, you know, spoken about this. This was one of the things she touched on as she opened this press briefing. Let's take a listen. NPA is not in a crisis. And that there is no widespread sabotage of the ID or any part of the NPA that is taking place. Um, we've come through a difficult period, that is so. And there are various internal processes that are looking at various aspects. Um, Advocate Cronier's resignation and Exco's decision to approve it is a culmination of various factors. And I'm not going to go into the details of this. Um, but the incorrect narrative in the media that it is because of interpersonal relations with, between her and I, it really makes for dramatic reporting. But that is where it ends. The interest of the country is important to both Advocate Cronier and I. Our decisions are made in the interests of the country. It is important to note that in high pressure and high stakes environments, occasional tensions or occasional disagreements are normal. So it's a high pressured environment. That's something that you know, the head of the NPA is talking about there. But I think one of the things she also mentioned, Tammy, is that the resignation of Advocate Cronier does not mean that the NPA is in crisis. She actually went as far as that Advocate Cronier has played her part and they are grateful for the role that she has played. What now they're working on is a smooth transition and making sure that a right person with right skills is appointed to this job. Mm. I mean, as you said earlier on, um, Malungelo, this was more 
than just about yeah. the resignation of Advocate sure. Kurnia, but it really was about the status sure. of the NPA. Uh, talk to us about what came out of that briefing as far as issues of capacity yeah. is involved. Do they have the financial backing? Uh, she mentioned the yeah. need for specialized yeah. investigations yeah. for certain yeah. types of crimes. I mean, uh, the issue of that. capacity within the NPA is something that will always be talked about and that the question that will always come up. She does say, while they do have, you know, some resources, but they need more. They need more specialized people to deal with some very complex, I mean, when she's speaking, when, while she was speaking about the issue of corruption, she's saying that those need specialized people who are trained to deal with the complexities of those. And, and from cases. what she was yeah. saying, she says that is what is needed. Sure. Was she saying that the NPA currently does not have It does have, but they're not enough, Tan. Right. They're not enough. But also what she's saying is that they, they cannot afford to fail. She repeated this, that the stakes are high, we cannot afford to fail, we are slowly closing the taps of corruption in this country, and that's what South Africans want to see. She said a fight against corruption is actually, it, it is not a sprinter is a marathon. So in a way appealing to us as South Africans to be patient with them. But she had also alluded in the beginning, Tammy, that she inherited an organization that was battered, mm -hmm. uh, an organization where morale among staff was actually quite low. And she's saying that they're working on rebuilding the NPA, which is something that is very important. Financial crimes, yeah are also very much yeah, tied yeah. to the type of complications and also to corruption in fact to corruption. exactly and those are the types of crimes that she said she needs more speciality exactly for but what about the trc yeah. crimes because those still are very unresolved that was actually quite an interesting um point that came out about the the trc they're conceding that they're, they're, there's a portfolio and they're conceding first that you know these cases are moving very slow I think there's about what 56 cases that are in front of them at the moment so there is a portfolio that has actually been created that is dealing with this particular issue she's saying that what they need to do is to make sure that the families of the victims do get justice ultimately and I know Tammy you know the issue of the the, the TRC and the and, and the prosecution of those that were involved in the crimes, you know, that led to so many people being killed. You know, that's something that many families still have so many questions about it and still have, you know, answers and want people to be held accountable. And Advocate Batoy admitting that they're now beginning to work on that and also conceding, though, that it is moving at a slow pace. I want to go back to the issue of corruption. Sure. And if we can go back to the State Capture Commission sure. of Inquiry, how many of those cases are actually going to be investigated? Because there's a lot that came out of the sure. commission, but what is happening with that information? So what they're still, already, Tammy, they're saying that they're waiting for that report from the State Capture Commission of Inquiry to see actually how many cases are they going to take to deal with. She's saying that they've got to be very strategic at how, at how they deal with the cases in the State Capture. So they, should, they can't just take any case. They also need to look into the issue of resources that they have. The issue of resources is coming back again. Remember they've said that when, if you want to deal with the issues of state capture, you'd need people that are also very specialized skills, of which we don't have a lot of those conceding to that we don't have a lot of those um, very specialized um, skills that will help us to deal with that but they're saying that they're also working on that and ensuring that when they finally receive that report they're ready to hit the ground running whether they'll be really be ready to hit the ground running it's anyone's guess because you know the issues that have been coming out on the state catcher commission of inquiry have been so many and the list of the people that have been implicated is long Tammy, and we will continue actually to see, you know, uh, and there were reports, in fact, that the report may be coming out in the next coming months, but it's not clear exactly when that report will be given um, to the president and when then it will be released to us. One of the narratives yeah. around Advocate Kurnia sure. and her time at the NPA is that there wasn't much progress made yeah. Malungelo, yeah. as far as the prosecution yeah. of cases is concerned. We heard Shamila Botoying saying 
we will likely see more movement in some cases. It, it, it was interesting to hear also, Tame, a question being posed as to how many successful cases did the ID have? And the question, th there was no response as to the number of cases, you know, successful cases. But she also had an interesting definition of success in terms of prosecuting. She says a successful prosecute, a successful case also means you're able to take a case, you get it rolled into court, and you see it through. As things stand, though, we don't have those cases, Tami, that we may have cases that have been taken to court, but we have not seen them through. So it's not really even about the outcome of, exactly. of the case. It's yeah. just walking the, the process. Journey. Just go through it's, the it's, process. It's the process, which at times can be very complex and very tedious. Any talk of a replacement yet for the ID? Well, not as yet, but we know, though, Tami, that the the process of appointing, you know, the new ID is going to, the, the new head of the ID is going to start in the next six, um, in the next six months or so. And she was saying that what they need to do is to make sure that they find somebody who's right, who's got the required skills to do the job. Malungi Boy, thank you once again for that. That's um, I'm Malungi Boy focusing there on the NPA and the briefing that advocate Abatoi just delivered to the media.